up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Shantae Marie and today I'm kind of excited for the topic that I'm going to be talking about because I feel like it's something that I've wanted to do. I just didn't know how to talk about it on my channel and not have people be like, uh, but your channel is about fitness and beauty and fashion and whatever. But as I get older, I feel like there's other things that interest me and my channel is about everything that I'm passionate about. So I figure I should just talk about this. Also, my friends have been pushing me to talk about this on my channel, so I'm going to. I just turned 26 in July, and I purchased my house in February, so I was 25 when I bought my house. And to most people, that's probably really, not unheard of, but definitely as a single person and somebody who was still in school at the time that I purchased my house, it's just not as likely to meet people that have done that, so I definitely think it's a different experience. The whole home buying process is different for everybody, but I wanted to give you guys my top five secrets to purchasing your own home at a young age. So these are just five things that I think were really helpful for me. Number one is to ask questions. A lot of people, I think, just jump into the home buying process after having watched like YouTube videos and Googling stuff, and maybe they don't have somebody that they can really turn to who has purchased their own house. I mean, a lot of people that I'm friends with, their parents have like never owned their own home. They've just rented, or their parents recently bought a home. So like, buying a home isn't even in their vocabulary just because of the way that they grew up and the way that they were raised and they've always been in a home that was rented. So I think being able to realize that you need to ask questions is definitely going to help. I spoke with so many people, friends who had purchased houses, people who'd purchased more than one house, people who had sold houses that they had owned, people who rent, um, my realtor, the lending people, uh, the VA, I, I used the VA home loan, so I definitely spoke with them a lot. They had tons of information on their website, but they were just helpful in general. I think just having the courage to ask questions, whatever comes to mind, it's not a stupid question, write it down. I would think of stuff when I was sleeping in the middle of the night, I'd be like, oh, that's a question I should probably ask. And I don't know how many times the words, I'm about to ask a question and it's probably stupid, but I know I said that a lot during the process, but I just always made sure that my questions were asked and answered. Otherwise, you're not gonna know what you're doing. Two is to get your credit in line. So, a lot of people think that your credit score is important, but they don't understand why. I feel like the whole credit score thing is such a cliche because you always hear people talking about, you need to do this and build your credit and you need to do that. End of the day, you're not gonna build your credit overnight. You either got it or you don't. Uh, if you don't have it or your credit's low because of choices that you've made, you can find ways to build that, and I'm not an expert at building a credit score or whatever. I know I know there's people who, like, their parents opened credit cards in their name. Basically what I did is Discover Card had this promotion for student a student credit card, and I still have that card to this day. And basically, it was just a super low limit. I think the limit was like $500 on this card. So basically everything that I would purchase, I would just put it on the card, let my bill come, and then pay it off. And then later I would find out that paying it completely off really isn't good. No matter what you do, your score is gonna be constantly like fluctuating. Um, there's so many things that I do that people still will be like, well that lowers your credit score. Okay, well I have a credit score, do you? like? You, you aren't gonna be perfect when it comes to that, but making sure that you're doing something to build your credit is going to help because, like I said, I bought my house at the age of 25. I haven't had to have a cosigner on anything. I just said that really awkward. I have not had to have a cosigner on anything since 
my first apartment, there's like plenty of websites online. You always see them advertised on TV. There's plenty of free ones. That system works really well too. And being able to check your credit score and to check all of your, pri your private information is really beneficial. End of the day, number two, make sure your credit is in check. Number three, budget. I can't express this enough, but budgeting is essential for buying a house. And for me, the way that the whole budget thought first came to mind is, I would go through over and over and write out all of my bills. So I'd be like, cell phone, internet, cable, water bill, electric bill, at the time I was paying gas, then my rent, my vehicle, my vehicle insurance, my health insurance, even though I wasn't paying health insurance at the time because where I live, I think it's like this everywhere, but if you're 25 or younger, you can stay on your parents' health insurance. So I went ahead and figured that in because I knew by the time that I bought a house, I would end up having to pay health insurance on my own anyways. I researched the health insurance for my job to figure out exactly how much that was gonna be out of each paycheck a month. So budgeted all of that. Then after I wrote it out on a piece of paper, I figured out that my bank that I bank with, I bank with USAA, they actually have their own budgeting calculator. And this thing is so smart that when I spend money with my debit card, it automatically places it into the category of the budget. Like if I buy food, it's gonna say, like if I buy food at a grocery store, it's gonna say groceries. And then when I go to the budget button on there and I look at my budget, it'll say you spent this much on groceries on this date, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of it, like at the very bottom, it has like zero to 100%. And every single day of the month, it'll say like you've spent this much percent of your budget, you have this much left until the end of the month. So it really puts you on track, and I'm honestly sure that USA is not the only bank that does that. I'm honestly sure that every bank probably does that. On Zillow.com, Zillow is like my homie when it comes to everything that has to do with renting or buying a house. Like, not that I'm out here buying houses, but even when I was renting, I was using Zillow. And then when I came, switched over to buying, I just was like, Zillow is basically the shiznat. Like, when you get on there, there is a budgeting calculator that you can once again put in all of your expenses. It's a little bit less intense, and it tells you how much the house is, and then it tells you if you make enough money to be able to afford that specific house. Or you can get on there and tell it that you don't have a specific house picked out, and you can say, I want to buy a house that's $150,000 and it will tell you if you can afford that and it will also tell you how much your estimated monthly payment is which comes in helpful later because when you're working with your lender you can say like I want to spend this much money a month and they will help you they'll tell you if you need to put like a down payment down they'll tell you what you need to do to get to that amount Number four, get your shit together. When I say get it together, I mean it's time to adult, it's time to grow up, it's time to do all the things that your parents probably told you to do growing up that you didn't take seriously. Number one being making sure that you have paperwork. When you go to a lender and talk to them, they are going to expect you to provide bank statements for checking, savings, every banking account that you have, they want at least the last three months of history. And for me, it was three months. I know some people it's like five or more. And also, if you're one of these people that you're like living paycheck to paycheck, as in you get paid and you go out and spend a grand on, I don't know, video games or something every month and it's showing up on your bank statements like a thousand dollars you are going to have to provide proof of like where that money came from 
and what you're spending it on and sometimes I know that I've heard of people getting asked like why and then to provide that proof it's a whole nother process as in you have to like fill out a sheet get that sheet notarized it's just really annoying so if you think or know that you're going to be buying a house I do not recommend doing it if you have any purchases on your checking accounts over $500. Now let's say you're paying off a credit card bill or you're paying something off. Like if they see that it's from like Best Buy, they're going to be like, okay, what is that? If it was a Best Buy credit card, it'll say it says it on your, they're going to know. Like it, it's, it says it. I only know because I have a Best Buy credit card and that was like on my statements obviously and it, it just it shows up on your credit score as well. So you want to make sure you have all of that. You're also going to want probably to have taxes just in case. You're also going to want to have pay stubs. You're going to want to have any pertinent information that they can say okay she's getting this money from here or whatever. They're going to want all the paperwork like that. So I recommend like having it already digitally saved onto a computer because they're gonna email you or and having paper forms like copies made to give to them. I don't know how many times I had to give pay stubs. The same pay stub. Like more than once. Like I would be at work and they would email me and I would email back like instantly because I just had a file on my computer saved with all that stuff in it. So I, if they asked for anything, I could just shoot it over to them like it was nothing. Your lender and your realtor are going to be contacting you like crazy. These people become like your family during the whole home buying process. You're going to know them really well and for a long time. So you have to get used to it. If they call you, I don't recommend waiting until the next day, unless it's like late at night or something, but like, don't be a child about it and, and when they call, be like, eh, I'll call them tomorrow, whatever. Like, if you want to buy a house and you want your home buying process to go smoothly and quickly, answer them. Like, answer their calls or make sure that you call back insanely quick. So the last Freaking one, number five, is your realtor. Your realtor is an important person in this whole entire process. I understand some people don't use a realtor, but if you're young, more than likely, you're gonna be using a realtor unless you're just super gung-ho, like, let me do this myself. Um, I have a friend who did it himself, and I just would not ever do that. I had to have a realtor. Not only that, usually there's benefits to using a realtor. For me, if my realtor came through USAA, automatically got a $600 gift card to use on anything after, after the house was purchased. I definitely want to put an emphasis on the fact that you need to like your realtor and have a connection with them because if you don't like them and you feel like you don't have a connection with them, then you're gonna think everything that's coming out of their mouth is just a damn lie. Like you're not gonna wanna listen to anything that they say and at the end of the day, they're literally doing all of this for you. And then it's kind of like there's a whole little realtor community and like the person selling the house is realtor and you're a realtor. If you don't get along, then they're probably gonna be like in cahoots with each other. And that's just a whole nother thing. Like you don't wanna, you don't wanna do that. So. Those are my five secrets. They're not really secrets. They're just things that I think would really benefit you and help you. Um, I am going to leave you guys. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll probably be doing lots of other home videos because my friends were like, girl, you need to, you need to do some home videos. So that's what I'm doing. Repping the, the lake bum, the lake bum hoodie because I, my house is on the lake. <laughs> And we're lake people, aren't we, Pope? Yeah. So, anyways, I will let you guys go, and I'll see you in my next video.